If you're looking for a spiritual transformation, you found the perfect podcast. This is the Spiritual Transformation Podcast, and I'm your host, Mary Beth. And each week, I have the honor of talking to top spiritual teachers, spiritual healers, psychics, people who can channel, and people who've had near-death experiences and spiritually transformative experiences. If this sounds like something that you're into, go ahead and hit subscribe now, and please like this episode. We're trying to grow this. We're trying to raise the vibration vibration of the planet, right, Tracy K? <laughs> Tracy, yeah. welcome yeah. to the show. You guys, if you're looking for love, you need to stay tuned because I have a special treat for you today. I have the love psychic, Tracy K, hey. and I'm going to read her bio, but I wanted to say hi to her first, see how you're doing. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor and pleasure to be here with you today, Mary Beth. I'm so excited about today because I know you're a lot of fun. I've had personal experience with you. I've had a session with you. So I know you're good. You guys, the, Tracy K is the real deal. So you're going to want to check her out. And I, I'm going to have all of your information in the description box where people can reach you. But first, right now, let's start off by reading your short bio so okay. people know a little bit about your background. All right. Meet Tracy K, the love psychic. Tracy is an international love and relationship psychic and certified sacred depths coach. Tracy is the creator of the soulmate alchemy method designed to assist successful spiritual women over 40 and manifesting their soulmate. Guys, stay tuned because we're going to talk about you too in this episode. <laughs> Following a divorce and departure from her award-winning role as an investment advisor, Tracy pursued her heart's calling to Europe. Mm -hmm. And while in Switzerland, she could no longer ignore her innate intuitive abilities that had been with her since childhood. A turning point came when Tracy's intuition saved her life, leading her to communicate with angels and ultimately guiding her to establish a private practice. Mm -hmm. Having healed from past toxic relationships and two divorces, Tracy, now happily married to her own soulmate husband, developed a keen sixth sense for identifying red flags and assessing energetic compatibility. Clients drawn by Tracy's unique insights traveled from neighboring countries and her reach expanded globally, allowing her to serve clients from all corners of the world, world virtually. With 17 years of experience and hundreds of clients later, Tracy continues to passionately offer intuitive love and relationship readings, workshops, and training programs for her diverse global community. Infusing her business with a love for culture and travel, cultivated through visits to over 30 countries, Tracy brings that same sense of curiosity and adventure to her work. Wow, 17 years of experience, that's a lot. <laughs> Yes, it is. It's quite a long time. <laughs> I've got that song. She talks to angels in my mind. And you know, what's funny is I'm remembering when we had our one on one session, we mm -hmm. first noticed this behind me. Yes. Angel wings behind you. You got you. Your angel wings. Trump yes. wings are a little bit bigger, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll allow that. But that was just so funny <laughs> because we're sitting yes. in this spot and we both have angel wings right over us. So that's crazy. And they're the same ones. Just different sizes. Yeah, yours is just bigger. And I, I'm, yeah, I'm totally an angel person. I talk to angels too. I right. think they talk back to you a bit more than they talk to me, but. <laughs> well, we always receive the, the messages in our own way. So they could be talking to you the same way you just receive it differently. But yeah, I love it. I think you're right. Cause I do feel like I just get these like no wings downloads more. And then exactly. some people yes. can actually hear words. Some people can actually, yeah. or they get feelings, you know, yes. so. So I think where we should start is like, tell me a little bit about your background. Were you always spiritual or what was your, what was, what was Tracy like as a child? That's a good question. So yes, I was raised in the, in the Lutheran church. So I have a very deep faith and I'm very spiritual. So I always have had that. And then, you know, when I was when I was a little girl, I was, I was very intuitive. I just kind of knew things or I kind of saw things. Um, I saw angels when I was little and I, you know, when you grow up, you don't know what that is. There's, 
especially then there was no internet or anything. So mm -hmm. we didn't have iPhones or anything. So this is, you know, in the eighties. You couldn't 90s, even take so. a picture with your phone. You couldn't even do it. Did, <laughs> did you see him as like full or did you see him as like, cause I've seen angels, but I see him as like almost orbs of light. I don't, yeah, when I was little, thing. they were orbs of light. Um, now I can see full angels. Cool. Um, yeah. But when I was little, it was just little like splashes of colors. Light. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And it was really magical, but I didn't really know what it was. And so I didn't know what to do with the information because I would see and know things about other people, uh, but I literally had no idea what to do with it. And I would have fun. And I would test it out at parties and stuff. People like, well, how would you know that? Uh, I mean, kind of freak people out too. <laughs> and so, and then as I got older, I just ignored it. I didn't know what to do with this. And it was kind of, I um, it kind of felt strange. It kind of felt but like different, a different path, right? And you set so it just, aside. Also, what about your church? Aside. Was your was it something that your church would be okay with, or was that considered? Evil? Oh gosh. Well, you know, I believe in reincarnation, and I remember, uh, I was in the car with my mom, and I was maybe ten, and I said, "Mom, I believe in reincarnation," and she goes, "That's fine. Just don't tell your pastor." <laughs> Nice. So they were like, my parents were super supportive, but it's like, just, uh, you still needed to, you know, be appropriate at, you know, church yeah. and school and stuff. Right. And so, yeah. And so that was my upbringing. And so then when I stepped out and started to do this work, I, it feels really natural to do this work because I've been, I've had these gifts. Um, however, there have been, especially now recently, as I've been stepping out in a bigger way online, uh, I have noticed some people are not super excited about it. Yeah. So, I mean, like people out in public, not my family, my family's super supportive. Right. Like social media, you mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I've had some mentors who have, um, been angry with me about it or have, um, tried to dissuade me. Mentors? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think those are very good mentors. <laughs> I am no longer in those programs. Let me just tell you, but it's, you know, when you invest at a high level and you're in this container with somebody that you respect and they're mad at you because you're speaking your truth, it's very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I went through a lot of that when I first, cause I call it coming out of the closet, coming out of the spiritual closet, because yes. I didn't talk about spiritual things for so long. And now here I am with a spiritual podcast. Exactly. So obviously I got over it, but there, <laughs> yes. there was a time where it would really bother me. Cause, um, you know, I've got, I sell these law of attraction, uh, addiction recovery with the law of attraction yes. deck of cards. And mm -hmm. even just law of attraction triggers people. Like I would get, yes. I did a sponsored thing on Facebook and I would get people telling me I'm going to hell. Like yes. uh, you need Jesus. And I'm like, I'm a big fan of Jesus, you know, yeah, and Jesus is a fan of me too, by the way. And Jesus was the master of law of attraction. It wasn't called law of attraction no. back in the day, <laughs> but that's what he was teaching is we're all connected to God, whatever he says, whatever I do, you can do too and more. And he was teaching us all this meditation. He was the biggest psychic there was people, you know, like he was, and he was telling us we could do it too. We can have our direct connection with God too. And I think people missed it. <laughs> well, you know, and the, not to go into theology or anything. Like but I just did. Actually, um, so I grew up Lutheran. And so actually Martin Luther was all about that the, the people can access the divine directly. Okay. I don't know much that about like that. A, oh, yeah. That was like the whole thing because the Catholic nice. Church actually at the time it's, you know, shifted since then, but the, the Catholic church at the time was all of, you had to, they, the reason this whole thing started was because they were selling indulgences. You could buy with money, uh, a, like a path to like forgiveness. If you did something. pay off your sins, right? right? Exactly. And so, and, and then you had to go through your priest or the Pope to get the, the guidance, the downloads from God. And Martin Luther was like, no, uh, people can just speak directly to God. And that was why he was the one who translated the first Bible into the local, you know, Germanic language, because before it was only Latin, which was only allowed to be read by theologians, right. Or mm. the, um, people in the, in the cloth. Right. So that this is like a huge revolution. And, 
and so it's kind of the same thing. It's like <laughs> the message is that everyone can be psychic. Everyone can have these gifts. Everyone can talk to God uh, and get this, these messages just like you and me and your other guests. And it's funny because I was raised Catholic. You were raised Lutheran. And here we are having this conversation. Yeah, here we are. So like, and, and are you sure it shifted in Catholicism? I mean, I mean, I'm a recovering Catholic, but are you sure it shifted? Because I think you still have to, I think they still kind of say you got to go through a priest like confession. I, I think that's still a thing. Oh, is it? So yeah. I have only Christian. been to a couple Catholic services. I think they're when we travel, we, I always am going to Catholic services and going to these beautiful cathedrals, uh, in Europe. And so I really do enjoy it, but yeah, they, I, don't yeah, they're beautiful. Know, I don't know how it feels like they're shifting, but I don't know what, you know, I wouldn't know. I'm not on the inside. <laughs> yeah. We got lots of money. They got lots of monies. So, um, what do you think about like fears? Like, what would you tell someone who was afraid they were raised possibly in mm -hmm. a church or, uh, where, or religion where they were told that this is evil? Like, what would you, is there anything you could say to soothe them or? Oh, that's a great question. Well, this is the thing. So if you really feel that way, then you want to explore those feelings and find what the truth is for you through your own faith. Um, if you, if you feel like this, I do want to channel or I am, I do have these intuitive gifts. I am psychic, uh, but I'm afraid to share it with my family who thinks that like, yeah, you know, that it's a good thing. You think it's fine, but your family does it. Then, you know, you have to, yeah, I definitely recommend getting mentorship, getting around a circle of other people who will have those same gifts, who are Ooh, expressing those yeah. gifts, because the more I step into this, the more I've wanted to surround myself with other gifted healers and intuitives, because that gives, gives me strength as well. So go to psychic fairs, go to events, go, you know, work with one um, and get in those circles, right? And you will strengthen yourself and then you can have conversations with your loved ones about it. That's um, a wonderful advice. Cause you're right. Cause once you start really opening up, coming out of the spiritual closet, people come out of the woodworks, you know, yeah. I'm in Cincinnati and I thought, man, nobody's spiritual here, but you, they're just, I think we were all in the closet and then you get your little tribe, you get yes. your, you get your woo woo crew, get your woo woo crew <laughs> together. <love> yes. <laughs> you got to find your yes. crew. So so that was, that's really great advice. Um, so I guess it kind of sounds like what you're saying too, is we got to allow people to have their journey. I'm definitely guilty of trying to, uh, flip people and get them to be believers when really I should just, we got to allow everyone to have their own path. And Absolutely. But you also have to find what's true for you mm -hmm. and be yourself. Right. And it's definitely a journey. I've definitely, I have flipped people. So like, I by, believe it. yeah, You're by taking crazy. them to you know, psychic fairs and things that they just weren't able to deny after that. And that's, mm -hmm. and I don't know, it's just pretty fun. It's pretty fun to do that. But, um, so tell me a little bit about what are your, cause like you said earlier, everybody has yes. different abilities, different ways that they receive information. What are yes. your, yeah, so that's a great question. So there's seven major, the people who are watching probably already know this, but there's seven major clairs, right? Or channels. And it's through our body. So our, you know, our body is amazing at being able to channel. So it's through your body. So if you're not channeling the way you want to, you want to get into a way, you know, get into a program where you can develop those different channels, but also know how you are designed to channel. Um, and then you might have to cut out some things from your life. Like we've just cut out alcohol. Um, I don't know. I don't know how long, you know, or, you know, if we'll add in some champagne here or there to cheers, but I can tell you it has completely shifted my ability in my, you know, to strengthen my channel before I was vegan. Um, before I, when I lived in Switzerland and I was very open, but I was also like really spaced out. <laughs> Yeah. A lot. So, so play with it, try to see what, you know, how you can develop your channels. But so there's the seven major channels. So I'm clairaudient. So that means I can hear things, um, clairsentient. So I can feel things. So when I go into, um, a reading, I'm getting information from all different places. I'm clairvoyant. So I see things, right. 
So I'm seeing images that the the guides or the angels or whoever I'm talking to, it's a passed away loved one. They're giving me little symbols and I can like actually see the little symbols, like a present or a dove, or I don't know, sometimes it's like really random stuff like corn on the cob. And it's like, why <laughs> corn on the cob? But then to the person, they're like, oh my God, it's my aunt. We used to shuck corn together, you know? And it's like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. So, so I see little vis- uh, images. I actually am... Uh, this is, I hope I'm saying this right. Claire, like goose tint. So like I could actually like, taste in my oh, mouth. Oh yeah. I, I heard about that one and I know yeah. you're cognizant too. So you basically, yes. you're, you, I think you have all of them. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I don't actually like the Claire empath, Claire empathy. So Claire empathy is when you can, it's not when you can read other people's emotions. Like that's just being an empath. It's when you get your psychic skills through your emotions. Hmm. And sometimes you can feel emotions like, so if you're, let's say you're searching for somebody's, um, like you're doing a reading and someone's daughter, um, young daughter had passed away and you could have felt the emotion of the, of the daughter. Mm. That, like I can't, I'm, I, I need to develop that. That's not as strong, but yeah. Anyways. Is there also one where you, I mean, I know there is one, but I don't know if it's like considered a Claire where you actually like someone has a physical ailment or a pain and then you get the pain. Is that yes, what I have that? About? I hundred percent have that. What's that one called? Or is that like, just that's their sentience? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And it, but every time it's in when I'm doing readings, it's doing, it's coming in different ways. So like, if you, if we go in and we're doing something and you start to feel sick to your stomach, like I'll feel it in my stomach too. Wow. Right. But not all the time. So it's just, it's, um, it just maybe means- when it's relevant, like when it means exactly. something. Yeah. And I always just, so when you're a channel or when you're a psychic, you just share your job is just to, re- re- uh, share the messages. Mm-hmm. I'm only there to deliver the message. I'm not there to interpret the message. So mm-hmm. like the thing with like the corn on the cob, it's like, I don't know why I'm getting this. So I just share the the image that I'm getting or whatever they're telling me or that my stomach hurts. And then they're like, oh my gosh, this is what's going on. Right. Yeah. I have a friend who's, who's she, she'll use psychics, but she's also pretty skeptical at the same time. Cause I, I feel like I always get, get great readings. And I think part of that's cause I'm so yeah. open and you're so easy to read. Yeah. I'm easy to read because I'm so open. And I think she's got a little bit of a wall, but her hers aren't that great, but also she sent me one from somebody. She sent me the recording and she thought it was the worst ever. She, it was good. It's just yeah. her interpret. I'm like, so you need to interpret, like you got to understand. That's what I tell her. Like mm-hmm. they're getting little symbols. They're hearing a word here and there. They're, you know, like they're, they're getting these little things and it's your job to interpret it. It's, mm-hmm. They're just telling you what they see. Exactly. They're not there to, and, and that's what I was trying to explain to her. And it was actually a very good reading. And for some reason, I w- since I've known her forever, I was able to tell her what it meant. Like, I knew what he, I knew what the science meant. I knew what it was. And she was like, oh, okay. You know, because I think sometimes people get psychic amnesia too, when they're getting a reading, they're like, no, that doesn't make sense. And then weeks later, oh yeah. Oh, that happens a lot, right? Because the message sometimes we need to sit with it for a little bit and then it makes sense like four weeks later oh a hundred percent I've absolutely and it's like obvious and you're like how did I not think about like (laughs) no I know yeah I've but I've done that too in my own readings right because sometimes we're just we're kind of we're stressed about something that's why we got the reading right yeah right (laughs) so we're like and sometimes the answer doesn't come like boom here's the answer sometimes it's like okay, you need to do these two things to get the thing you want. Mm. And it's like not what we were wanting them to tell us. <laughs> Wait, I got to work for it? <laughs> you know, it's like, you need to declutter, for example. And it's like, well, that how is that going to help me with, like heal my broken heart or whatever it is. And then you go and you do the thing that they told you to do. And then it you feel, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. You got to just actually take those steps and yeah, you're right. A lot of people just don't want to do the work. They just want everything figured out for them. And, right. and, and oh, when I get a lot of those, off. Oh, hundred percent. I get a lot of the questions, which you saw when we were preparing for this, when mm-hmm. people were like, when am I going to find love? People ask me that a lot. And 
actually really don't like that question because <laughs> even though I can kind of see it's like, okay, it's going to be Q1 or it's going to be kind of in the fall because you got these other things going on. Even though I can share that, it's like, you could actually find love right now. You can have it anytime. We so, create our own reality. We exactly. create our own reality. We could shift things around. 100%. So that's what that's what I always tell people is with a psychic, they're only able to read your current vibration, your current frequency, your current energetic 100%. grid, so to speak. Yes. So you are responsible for that, you know, and yeah. you can, you can shift it you can change it. So they're, they're telling you what's going to happen if you don't shift anything. And that leads into my next question to you was, yeah. is, does knowing about your future sometimes shift it? And I would say it definitely could depending on, but you tell me, like, I think, like I've had someone tell me this is going to happen on this day. And then it made me act differently. It was work related. And then I started acting differently. And then I, sh I think I shifted everything. I don't think the psychic was wrong. I think the psychic was reading exactly what was in my current energy field. Mm -hmm. And then I started acting different based on that information. And then mm -hmm. I shifted that reality. I shifted the future that she saw. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yes, absolutely. You can hundred percent. I think <clears throat> It depends on the type of psychic that you're visiting and what you're asking them. So one of the things that's really important is to have very clear questions that you ask. Come prepared. I've had a couple of people come to readings where they were not prepared. And that's okay. I mean, I can just do a general reading, um, but it's not going to be as powerful as when you, you come and you're like, you know, I'm really ready to find my soulmate. I want to meet someone this year. Like I'm ready. Then I can read you and guide you to creating that, or if it's your business or if it's your career or whatever it is, or connecting with a loved one. But if it's just a general reading, I'm going to give you a general reading and it's going to be like whatever random stuff it's like sitting in right. your energy field. Right. Right. Um, so, so telling you your future, I mean, I do forecast for people, but you know, generally it's like you said, it's the energy that you have now. So I just did this for a gal the other day. She asked, you know, if she's going to call in love this year and it, this literally felt like she had to clean up some stuff in the first six months of the year. I don't know what those things are. I just told her, it feels like you're cleaning some stuff up in your life. I don't know if you're kind of getting your finances in order. you got to finish um, something with your divorce. Like it feels like she needed to clean things up mm -hmm. and then she would find, and then call in love. Right. So that's forecasting as far as I saw for her, I'm not going to be like on September 15th, right? Yeah. You're going to walk into a restaurant and there's going to be this guy there. Right. Because then what are we going to do? We're going to like not ever go to a restaurant because we're going to be too freaked out. Like, is this a restaurant? Is this a restaurant? Yeah. That's, that's so true. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. There's, and there is something beautiful too, about letting things unfold naturally. Oh yeah, exactly. hundred percent. And if we know too much, then we kind of block that. And you guys stay tuned because um, we're going to be going over some questions that we, we collected on Facebook um, yes. from people you don't know, but I know, I know all there's, there's I'm, four, four of them really four, and we're going to, we're going to have you tune in and, and see what you come up with. And some of them might be the kind you don't like. Cause I, I can tell you right now, um, there's some time questions in there. We'll just see what That's comes okay. up. We'll just well, see what I'm, comes up. I'm really good at, at seeing through the questions. So sometimes I'll ask another question or I'll give some insight around it because mm -hmm. I do get a lot of those kinds of questions recently. And the, actually the thing is that what the, what people are really wanting to know instead of like, when it's like, how, like, yeah. right. That's really what they're wanting to know. Like, like, is it going to happen? And how can I create this? And so one of the things is like, you are already whole and complete. You're already this amazing person. And, and there are things, some, maybe some skills or some things to clear up to get to be this, the, the match for your soulmate, right. To be that energetic match. Mm -hmm. So even though you're whole and complete, there are probably are some things to clean up and it could be one. I was on this call. I, I have this program and I think you talked about it. It's the soulmate attraction program. Mm -hmm. And right now we're in beta test and it's super fun. And so we just had the call on Wednesday and I was telling the gals about, I did this reading for this client and she still had a bank account with her ex-husband and it'd been like 10 years. And she's like, I don't know why I can't find a good guy. And I was like, 
because you're still connected to your ex-husband through this bank account. You guys, you got to clean this stuff up. Cut those energy cords. Cut the cords, cut them. You'll be fine. You can figure out the bank account thing. Cause she was like, oh, but he pays me monthly and I need the account. I was like, you got to figure this out because that's keeping you from, mm. so you see like she's whole and complete. She's still a good person. She's ready to meet her soulmate. She just needed to clean up some energetic stuff. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I I've told people that a lot, you know, I think in this modern dating world, and you tell me if you agree or not, that there's a lot of people doing a lot of casual situationships. And mm-hmm. I always tell my clients, if you're in a situationship, mm-hmm. you're blocking hundred the right person from coming in yes. energetically. They don't, they don't yeah. have to know about them for real. They don't mm-hmm. ever have to find out that you have a situationship going on. You got this, you know, but that you, someone, and with what I mean by that is you have someone in your life who you, you, you both know it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to be anything long-term commitment, but, yeah. but they're there. Um, yeah. Maybe like a booty call when you feel like it, you're <laughs> booty calling. Yeah, hundred percent. The problem with this is, okay, you guys. So energetically, <laughs> it feels really good in the moment. You you know you went out with your girlfriends and you're lonely and you're like, oh, I wish I could just you know I want them just to come over and have a quick hookup, right? Mm-hmm. The problem with this is, especially if it's multiple people. Like I'm not coming from a judgment place at all. I'm saying energetically you create cords with all these people. So you have these cords to your body. <laughs> your energy body. exchanges are real. Yeah. And that's a deep, a real, intimate energy real. exchange. Yeah. And so you, you have this cord to this guy or gal, you have this cord to this person. And then the person who's looking to find you can't see you because you're connected to, and you're like, it looks like a big, clumpy you're not on their radar because yeah your frequency is not yeah it's like you're not available energetically you're not available energetically you know what i call them i call them spiritual stds yes (laughs) no it's the truth you might not be getting the actual physical std people but you're getting spiritual ones and it's not judgment like i no 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 no. i I just think a lot of people aren't aware of that how much they're blocking by keeping, 100%. you know, by keeping certain, you know, relationships, uh, yes. and maybe even sometimes they're unhealthy, but you keep them around because it's better than being lonely. I'm going to say, no, it's not better than being lonely. No, it's not. The thing is because you won't be lonely that long because you're actually, when you clear it all up and if you need someone to cut those cords for you, that is something that I do. Nice. I clean them out and it, it is, it's kind of gross actually uh, <laughs> when you see it uh, energetically, but you need to have it. It's like, um, it's, it's like, um, I'm picturing slimy and gooey. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to get that stuff out of there. Uh, but then the person who you're supposed to be with can see you, or when you do meet them, like you don't have any attachments. And so then you have this pure and like, crystal clear coll- connection. Mm-hmm. You don't have any of these random, like, oh, now I got to go call that person and break up. And I got to you know, undo this other thing that I did over here. Right. It's like, you have this perfectly crystal clear connection. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm a law of attraction teacher and that's like huge on creating space. You know, you got to create space and it could be even something like it rolls over into like you and your, your wife or your husband, you want it, you're preparing for a baby. You're having a hard time getting pregnant, create space for that baby, make the room, do all these things to prepare, you know, like there are things we need to do, make room for this new person to come into your life. A hundred percent, especially these high achieving, you know, when I work with a lot of women entrepreneurs, they don't have the time in their schedule. They're always like, I'm too busy. I'm like, well, that's why you're not calling him in or her in. Um, is because every time I talk with you, it's been like, oh, it's been a crazy day. Oh, everything just, it's so busy. And it's like, well, how is a guy going to fit into that or a gal? Right. So a hundred percent, I was going to share one thing when, when we're doing this clearing. Oh, so what I've been calling it lately is when you're ready to call in your soulmate, it's called, I call it turning your light on. So like a taxi cab in New York city, when they're available there, they turn their light on and then, you know, okay, I can get in that taxi. So if your light is not on, like you're dating all these guys, but none of them are really the right person. 
and it's kind of complicated, right? Your light's not on. So your guy or your gal cannot see that you're available. Mm, that's right. a great analogy. Yeah. Yeah. They can't see you. Your light's not on. I always, right. I always compare it. Um, one of my first jobs was at great expectations. Do you remember that? I, I don't know how yes. old you are, but so I, so I was yes. like, so I worked there and helped people, you know, with their dating profiles and I would record yes. them and it was, because it was pre-internet, right? So it was when you made videos, like actually, you made like, the videos. videos. <laughs> I, I, I was a videographer. I did all the things I helped people. I, so it was so fun. Um, but I kind of always compared it to like, you know, you're, it's a, like a job application. Like, okay, yeah. now I'm open yeah. to collect resumes. I'm open to, you know, when before that, okay, somebody's, somebody's, I have a candidate, he's taking the spot. I'm not, you know, like, and so I think if you're, you know, you got to put, you got to put something out there, a signal into the universe that yes. you are open and available. Because like you said, like, you don't have to be psychic. Everybody feels energy because we're all psychic. Oh, yeah. We're all psychic. Okay. And that's why like you could literally be next to somebody who would be a great vibrational match. But if you have it blocked, mm -hmm. like you said, they can't see you. You're not mm -hmm. on the radar. You're flying mm -hmm. under the radar. And, and it's unfortunate, you know, especially if you go out and you have like your like I do. This is this is me. I'm, I'm shaming myself. I go to the gym. I've got mm -hmm. my headphones in. I'm like not even looking around, not looking up. And, you know, uh -huh. it's like I look unavailable. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if I well, want. Yeah. To and you're across. absolutely stunning. Like as a, if oh, I was, thank dude, you. I, and I saw you at the gym and you're like head, you had headphones on your head's down. I mean, you're gorgeous. I'd be like, oh, she's for sure married with for sure. Like I wouldn't <laughs> even talk to you. I would be like, there's no way that she's available. Right. Well, but no, if you they, like, no one talks to me. me and you smiled at me <laughs> yeah, and you like, kind of like, you know, we're like, oh, are you done with invited? Your, yeah. You're, are you done with those 25s? I'd be like, uh, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You got it. And, and that's like advice. I'm, I, I know that I do that. And I know like, cause sometimes I go to the gym, I'm just on this mission, you yeah, know, yeah. I got to get this yeah. done and then I got to do this and this and this and this. And then I and we talk about that a lot in my program because this is what, especially driven women, because I work with women over 40. So we're all like ambitious and driven. And that's what we do. We go to the grocery store. And we're like, rah, rah, rah. I got to get this and get back to the house. Right. <laughs> Is that like an A-type personality? That's, that's, that's definitely me. That's definitely Right. Me. And so then it's like, there's like, we're not seeing what's there. We're not connecting with who's there. And it might not be our guy, not might not be there, but that, that lady who is at the register, she could have the hottest son who's like coming oh. home for the holidays and you would be like the perfect match. Right. But she mm -hmm. doesn't have a chance to tell you that because yeah. you're just like, Oh yeah, and I gotta pick up my kids from the soccer camp. Like and you're just like <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. And and then that that's that's to the point of like what I would teach my clients is being grounded, being in the present moment, right. you know, when we're not, when we're in the past or when we're in the future, we're not in our power, totally. you know, like, so we got, yes. in, our, our power is in this moment and we're ignoring it, you know, yes. the past is, yes. you know, kind of over, well, it is over with, and there's no reason to dwell on it. We're kind of in our ego if we're dwelling on it. And the future is anxiety. You know, yeah. if, if we're thinking about the future, it's usually like some sort of anxious things. And 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 when we're in the in the present moment, we can actually, you know, and I've been working on that myself because I do have that tendency exactly like you called me out on. <laughs> That's facts. I, I can't deny it for sure. So I think a lot, yeah, a lot of women and men, yeah, it's just we, really common now, especially with our phones. We're distracted. You know, our phone, we're distracted. We're rushed. We're busy. And it's like, we've got to, uh, you know, the, the God or the divine wants to deliver you to your person. They want to bring you two together. They want mm -hmm. you to have this your soulmate connection. They're like, they want to like shake you. Your angels are like wanting to shake you. <laughs> I'm kind of like asking for a sign and then not paying attention or looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> like we got it. We got, there is a role that we got to play in this, in this two way yeah. street. Do you have rules for when like spirit can communicate with you? Oh, that's a good question. So when, so I'm always open to the angels and to God share, speaking with me all day long. I do have very specific meditations and I have very specific rituals all day to to connect with God and to receive guidance. So it, that's all day long. 
and and I journal um, every day. However, if it's a passed away loved one, because I'm a psychic medium, I do mediumship readings with clients and um, I only allow the mediumship to be, they, they have to like, it's like they have to schedule a time, right? So like the client needs to be in the call with me for me mm. to speak with a medium, uh, to speak with their loved one. Now, when I last a couple of weeks ago, I did a live group mediumship reading and I swear everybody was lining up. I couldn't sleep for like Spirit two nights. nights. Yes. They were like, They're like, hey, I'm going to get in. This is my, so my time. Like say, okay, guys, I need to sleep. You've got to just wait until the call. So I had to, I have have to set some better boundaries with that. Uh, but my grandmother, she'll come in all the time during the day and that's okay. It's like when I'm at the grocery store, I don't see people's relatives uh, I don't want to, cause it scares me. <laughs> yeah. So you can block it. Yeah. I remember seeing this psychic. I can't think of her name mm -hmm. right now. Maybe if somebody knows they can comment below, but she would, if she had a TV show and yeah. she would wear a hat that and her yes. hat was her hat meant I'm closed for business. She had, okay. she turned off that taxi signal light. She's yeah. like closed. And so, close. yeah. so, so that was her symbol to spirit realm that yeah. I'm taking a break. Nobody try to talk to me. Yeah. Do you have anything I, like that? I would, I would love to be stronger so that when I'm out and about, I could see them and then I could just relay the messages. But when I've done that in the past, it really scared people. <laughs> so I just decided to, I only tell people when they have booked an appointment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or they I can see how that would be like, you don't know how they're going to react, but I would hope if the spirit's coming to you that they know their relative enough to know that it would be okay to pass on the message, but that might not always be the case. <laughs> yeah. Some people were really freaked out. And it, so I was like, okay, we're only doing this. If, if it's really an, like an important message, like sometimes even uh, famous people come through and, mm. and I'm like, what, like, what, what are you trying to tell me? Cause I don't know their family. Like their family is not here. Like, what are you trying to tell me? Uh, and so it's the same thing. I hope that if someone's relative is coming through, I will gently say like, Hey, I'm getting these messages. Would you like me to share? And if they're That's open, good. I will, but in general, it's like, no, you need to wait. <laughs> yeah. Cause they could, they could always say, no, I'm not open to it. And then at least you yeah. asked, That's what I was yeah. going to ask next. It's like, if you felt any kind of obligation, um, to tell a disease, it sounds like you don't feel an obligation, um, for the unsolicited, <laughs> messages from spirit you don't feel obligated but you you might i i like that i like that you could just be like hey i'm a psychic medium i'm getting this message are you open to the message yeah. or, and then they say no no harm done yeah, they just think exactly. some weird lady came up to me at <laughs> grocery store <laughs> oh my gosh and the craziest thing is so and then for those of you who are you know starting to channel or you or you are starting to sense see uh, to see you you are getting these mediumship kind of you were seeing people who are passed away giving messages uh if you're watching this you know don't be scared there you can you can di dictate like they only give you loving messages of forgiveness or peacefulness i i do if if the person wants to know how they passed away or what something that happened, like I will ask the deceased person to share and then I'll pass that on. But I don't allow them to just give me the full graphic details without me. So you don't have to receive those kinds of visions, just sharing that. Cause sometimes people all of a sudden are like, why am I seeing these things? You can tell them, no, thank you. Like uh, the healthy boundaries you were talking about earlier. Exactly. We, can, we can create boundaries just like we have to do with people. The, the, the living exactly the living. yeah we gotta we gotta yeah. do that with spirit too yes exactly yeah because just because they're they're on the other side doesn't mean they're going to automatically follow rules <laughs> yeah they don't know they just want to share they just want to yeah. connect with you and give you information um but it's very beautiful i've had those calls are sometimes the most healing calls so yeah they're yeah, I, everyone that I know who's lost a loved one would say that talking to a medium was the most healing experience of their life, you know, just because there's things that were said that were undeniable, like they can no longer be like, and they know that they know that they know it was their, their yeah. loved one, you know, and, and it is a really crazy 
because right before the calls, I'm like, I'm always like, am I ever going to get a message again? Like, is it going to work? Is it going to happen? Even though I've been doing this for a long time and I've done hundreds you get of nervous. Years, yeah. I do. And I still like, I don't know if they're going to come through. Maybe their family members isn't going to come and they're going to be disappointed. And then every single time it's like crying, like, oh my God, it's like the most amazing thing ever. So it's just, yeah. it's, they're really, they're really healing. That's an awesome gift to have. And I know that you know, spirit knows when you're someone who has that ability and that's why they come to you. That's why even yes. the celebrities are coming to you. They can, they, spirit knows who can hear and see them and receive their messages. Spirit knows yeah. this. That's why they were lining up for you that one day too. Yes. Oh my gosh. It was crazy. I was like, guys, I need to sleep. <laughs> I was like, I know I have this group call. It was a beautiful call though, but yeah, so I've been getting, um, so I grew up in the nineties in Seattle. So I really love alternative music and grunge music and, I've seen almost everybody in concert back when I was in my twenties. Mm -hmm. Right. And so Chris Cornell passed away a couple of years ago, I think mm -hmm. in 2017 yeah. and he's been coming through recently. Wow. And like I absolutely love him. I think he's such a beautiful person. And so I just, um, it's been, it's been a couple, it's like two or three times in my dreams. And I'm like, what are you wanting to tell me? Because then I wake up and I don't, so it's just remind me, was that considered a suicide? Yes. Yeah. I've heard, I, a lot. Don't, I don't know if this is true, but I've heard a lot of like Hollywood and, and musicians that they're not really suicides sometimes, but it's made to look like yes. suicides. That's what I'm I wonder if that's a message that he's trying yes. to relay. Yes. I know. So I need to sit with that and ask someone. And you need to let me know when you figure it out. Cause now I, I will, remember. but yeah, I, I wonder if it's, you know, that, yeah, there's all these, you know. Yeah. Like I, if, if, if I was labeled as a suicide and I'm on their side and I could get that message to somebody to, to be like, Hey, let's mm -hmm. get the record. Let's set the record straight. I'd be yeah. like, I'd be like knocking on your door too, Tracy. Yeah, totally. Hey, let, let's get this out there. No, exactly. Oh my gosh. Here we are talking about him in my podcast. You know, what'd you just say? I know we're not talking about love right now, but it's just, I'm just, I'm really enjoying this conversation. Well, we're about to talk about love okay. because I'm okay. going to go ahead and get into these questions about love specifically that um, four people that I know submitted prior to the show. <laughs> since we're not doing this live, it's live for you because you don't know the questions. I mean, I think you saw a couple of them, but you don't know these people. And I do so. not. It's live for me. Yeah. I'm going to say their full name so you okay. can tune in better. Okay. And hopefully they're not mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. Okay. okay. Eric Delaney asks, okay. does he have any blocks when it comes to manifesting a relationship and do you have a general idea of when his next relationship will come to fruition? So that's oh. a time thing, but let's start with the blocks. You know, okay. Eric Delaney, does he have any blocks? Yeah. So, okay. So this is what I'm getting for Eric Delaney. Um, what it feels like is there's a couple of things going on. One, he has a softer energy. So it feels like he was hurt before. And he, because he has the softer energy, um, and I don't know if it's like, you're not super comfortable with your finances. It feels like a little bit like there's some dysfunction there. Mm -hmm. And, and then the role that you want to play in your relationship, the type of partner that you're wanting to call in, you're not you're not clear in yourself who you are and the energy you have and the energy of the person that you're wanting to call in. And it feels like you're feeling like, um, unsettled financially in yourself. Um, and there's nothing wrong with what you like, what you're earning or the job that you have to the outside world. It's almost like his own self judgment. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, you're expecting that you're going to be this, this other person that you're not. So it's like you either, you know, love and accept yourself as where you are and look for that, the gal or that guy that would be a great match for that, for where you are yeah. and understand that, or, or like, it, it's like, feels like either you just really don't have a clear understanding of who you are. Um, and then what you're looking for. 
it's kind of feels like it's like who like random like who like you a little bit of a right. wobble in the vibration yes a hundred percent it's like and then if you do want to sh- shift your job situation or you want to shift who who how you're showing up who you're being you can do that you're going to want to get in you know some mentorship uh you know invest in um I don't know if it's, you know, your wardrobe or shifting your career, getting some support with that. Like you can hundred percent shift that, or you can, you know, and at the same time, it's like, I know it's always like, you're going to shift, but at the same time, you're also whole. Like, I know it's, it's like a dichotomy, right? Um, but the thing is that when you know who you are and what you're looking for is when that person shows up. So mm-hmm. instead of it being like a random hookup that you end up staying together for three years, it's like, I want a sweet gal who's like a kindergarten teacher who loves to just knit and like snuggle with cats and read books on the weekend Mm -hmm. and then own that. And that's the gal or the, or, you know, I'm using, um, that like as an example, um, or if you, or if you, you know, like if you're into a a different sex, right. If it's like, I'm really just like guys who are like construction workers Mm -hmm. and it's like, well then own that. Right. Like then go for that. Um, so clarity, like set the intention. And I think it's so common for men, especially mm -hmm. to be like, and I know some women like this too. They feel like they have to have everything financially perfect, get rid of all their debt. Cause they, 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 you know, before they get into a relationship, you know, and they they feel like it's baggage and that, that could definitely be a block. And and that's not true. We need to tell people that's not true. You don't have to be perfect and perfectly healthy and healed. Nobody's perfectly healthy and healed. Oh yeah. And most, most people have some debt. This is America. Well, we're in America, but this will be right. other countries will hear this as well. Yeah. But you know, the thing is, is, is it's very common. And, and we got, I think it's a self-worth issue more than anything is just yeah. get that out of your mind that you have to already be in this perfect, you know, a lot of guys feel like I need to be the breadwinner. And I don't think that's true anymore. You know, it's okay if you, if, if she makes more money than you, that's okay. Yeah, definitely. Yes, absolutely. But, but watch him be like, I'm a millionaire. We don't know. <laughs> we don't even know. <laughs> but even if he is, even if you are a millionaire, because we, you know, here where I live, like if you own a home, you're a millionaire because our home values are just ridiculous. Right. Where do you live again? In Seattle. Oh, you still are in Seattle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, so you could be a millionaire, but you could still feel like it's not enough. Right. It's like, I need to, right. I, you know, I have, you know, this million dollar portfolio, I have this home, but it's like, but then maybe the cash flow is the issue or you feel like it's not enough, like to right. attract the woman that you want, or you think you need to be this whole other, like, I need to have a Porsche and I need to be like this driven guy, but really it's like, you'd rather just, you know, putter and, and make, you know, do woodworking on the weekend. It's like, right. well, then be the guy who likes to do woodworking on the right. weekend. Right. And there's a, there's a, I always like to say, there's a lid for every pot. There's somebody who's no, there like really you exactly is. like you are yes. and you don't have to change. I see it every day. I look at people in relationships yeah. and I'm like, damn, like, how are they in a relationship? And I'm not like, <laughs> like what? But okay. So, guys. Mm-hmm. so like, it sounds like the general idea of this next relationship will come to fruition. Um, it sounds like that's going to be dependent upon when he clears up this, like set, gets real clear on exactly what he wants in a, in a woman. Yes. Get re- if it's confident woman. with himself yeah. as he is, and just either, either make some changes that'll make him feel more confident. Like you mentioned, like the wardrobe, maybe, yeah. you know, hiring a hire hire a, a relationship dating coach. So you yeah. can, you know, get some tips and maybe you know, something like that, or just be happy with who you are right now. Cause like you said, you, we are already whole and complete. So yeah. well, it's really, I a hundred percent agree with that and getting really clear on the type of person that you want as your partner and looking for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and some, this isn't the right way to say this, but sometimes we want something we think in our head, we want something, but it's actually not really what we want. Oh no, that's happened to me. Like I, I'm really good at manifesting and I will manifest exactly what's on my manifestation list. But then I'm like, Oh, I got to tweak it now because you don't know what you want until you have what you don't want. Then, you know, then, okay. So then you tweak the manifestation list. Okay. So it's a continuous process. Life is yeah. about contrast and then creation. And so it's it's not, doesn't mean you did something wrong. It's just, okay, well, let's recreate. We're creators. Mm-hmm. That's what we that's what we do. So yeah. 
Oh, and healing from past hurts. One of the things we do in my program is we do forgiveness and releasing ex, like even if it was a parent or a past relationship Mm. where we really like even traumatized or abused, um, we do a lot of work around that because we bring that into the new relationship and we think that new person's going to be like that old person and they're not, they're a completely different person. But sometimes from our patterns, we make them into this, that same pattern. You start continuing the same arguments. You start yes. and you get triggered by things that would yes. not, yeah, that, that it's everybody deserves a clean slate guys. Everybody 100%. deserves a clean slate. Yeah. One of the things that I did, so my ex-husband and I would fight all the time about like housekeepings, even though I was the breadwinner, I was the only one who made money and worked the whole time in our relationship. He was at home. I thought that he would clean the house, but he right. thought That's I'm fair. a woman. So I should clean the house too. You can't so be traditional thought, in one area and not no, traditional no, in the other. And so we fought about it. And so when we got into this new relationship with my now husband, I was like, I am never fighting about this again. So I just hired a housekeeper. And so I don't have that problem. There you go. And, but then that would make for me, then I'd be like secretly like resentful and I'd get all passive aggressive about it. Like, you know, I had to hire a housekeeper because like, oh. you know, I, I think that I would make me a little resentful that, you know, he's at home doing nothing and I'm working and then he can't even, then, and I still have to hire a housekeeper. Come on. Oh, well, my husband is the breadwinner in our relationship. So, so then I, I was fine. <laughs> oh, this marriage. Oh, I yeah, thought we were talking marriage. about your old, your old. No, marriage. no, no. I just, we just gotcha. had <laughs> so let's ask about Miss Kathy Hughes. Kathy Hughes. Oh, okay. She asks, "Can I still find love at seventy-seven? We kind of already answered her on that on Facebook. Oh, like, yes. like, like okay. we already know the answer is yes. Yes. So, so I'm adding to her question for her. Mm-hmm. Do you see anything that she can specifically do to help her manifest this guy? Is he already in her field or must she do something to work to attract him? Kathy That's Hughes. A great question. So Kathy Hughes, you can absolutely manifest true love at any age, especially at 77. You're still really young. You have a long time. And yeah, it's definitely a wonderful thing to have a partner. Um, it feels like she's still really, uh, in love with her husband who passed away. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, healing from that is important. And knowing that, you know, knowing what he would want for her, would he want her to move on? Would he want her to um, find someone new? Or would he want her to wait a little bit? Like, you know, you, she can connect in with him and to, to find out those answers and to, to honor that uh, or, or make her own decisions um, now that she's on the other side of that. And gosh, it will be so easy for her to find love. She just, it's really about letting people know that you're, you know, you are looking to have a partner again. And yeah. I, it feels like there's a, one or two gentlemen who are in your, I don't know if you go to church or if it's, um, or if you have kind of like a social group that you're a part of, it feels like there's one or two gentlemen who have seen yeah. you and thought you were very cute before. And that they're just, they're trying to honor because her husband just passed. So they're trying to be appropriate. See, I didn't even know that about her. I didn't know. I don't know about does So does her, since you're a medium, does her deceased husband have, um, a message for her? Oh, that's a good question. Just popped in my head. (laughs) I was thinking if I were her and you know, I used to work with, well, Kathy, she was associated with me through work, but I didn't know anything about her. I don't know anything about her personal life. Yeah. So Um, I didn't know she had a deceased husband or. Yeah. Her husband um, loved her so much. And like, she was the light of his eyes. Right. So he just was so enamored with her and he wants her to be happy. He just really misses her very much. And, um, 
he he definitely I, I can feel from him he doesn't really want her to move on right now he's still like connected to her mm -hmm. so he's feeling like he wants her to it feels like he he wants her to be happy but he's still like no you're still my wife so she would want to do some releasing and mm -hmm. some uh, blessing uh, work around that okay interesting so my next question is for Patrick Gilpin. Mm -hmm. Patrick Gilpin asks, why do I keep attracting women who have a lot of chaos and need to be fixed or saved? Ooh, that's a great question. So what was his name again? Patrick Gilpin, G-I-L-P-I-N. Gilpin. Oh, Patrick. Okay. Uh <laughs> now I do know Patrick, so this will be funny. Oh, okay. It feels like when I tune into him, it actually feels like he loves it, it, the girls. It feels like he attracts, they feel like they're like super cute, like they're cuties mm -hmm. and that when, so he kind of, he wants to be with that type of girl. It's a very specific type of girl. The look. And Yes, it's a very specific look and they're just adorable. And he wants to kind of save them. And it's like, it's something that happened when he was younger that made him this way. And so he's like the savior and he just, it's these cutie little girls. And so he, he can save them and it's, and so then he just keeps attracting them. So he'll break up with the one or the one leaves and then he does it again. So he has to actually stop that pattern and it's actually the pattern interrupt. Of course, you can solve the trauma that caused you to keep needing to save. It's, it's a little bit of control and it's a little bit of like, um, it, it's this, this, the need to save people. It's coming from like a deficiency within yourself, right? Okay, I'm calling you out on YouTube. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> um, he kind of said that himself, so it's okay. So what the actual pattern interrupt is to actually go out with a different type of girl. That's what I just told him today. I said, you know, you can change what you're attracted to. You just have to go out with a different type of girl. Even if you're not going to marry this girl or sleep with this girl, just go out with anybody that's completely different. Like these girls are adorable, but it's like, go to a bookstore and like ask out the, the lady who's working at the register or something like just <laughs> someone like not completely different. <laughs> Do you think it could be too like a self-worth thing where like, what do I have to offer somebody who doesn't need to be saved? Like I told him, could it be a hero's complex, but maybe I'm way off with him. I don't know. Yeah, it, it could be. It feels like when you create all this chaos in your life or when the, when you allow, when you date, allow. Somebody, yeah. when you allow all this chaos in your life, then you're, you're creating this distraction from what really is. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's what he said earlier today. He said, I, I think it's a way of me not having to focus on working on myself. Cause then I'm always working on somebody else. Mm -hmm. He's got self-awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you just, it's a pattern interrupt. You've got to stop the pattern. Interrupt the pattern, Patrick. Yeah. And so, I mean, of course there's some healing that can be, you can do some healing on some stuff that's happened. That's created this pattern, but to right now. Okay. So we have this, the neural pathways, you teach all this. I know mm -hmm. in your program, right? We have these neural pathways. So you've got to create a pattern interrupt and shift that neural pathway, or you're going to keep repeating this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, do something different. We got to do like, like you, like you said, different. yeah. Mm -hmm. When like, um, it's almost like, and this is what I had to do with myself. Like it's almost like the more chemistry I have, the more I should stay away from that person because, <laughs> because it's familiar and it's like, run. Like that's like, that should be a sign that chemistry is sometimes a pattern that we need sometimes to- Sometimes it can, it depends on how, like how evolved you are into your inner work, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, cause I, 
it, not always is it bad to have such. It's not, yeah, it's not always bad, but yeah. sometimes I think like if it's oh god, yeah, if, if both people have this hot and heavy chemistry in the beginning, you know, just you can have a chemical haze and not be thinking straight and then 100%. jump into things too soon. And, and it's just don't lead with sex guys. Like, you know, take time to get to know somebody. It takes time. Yes. It takes time because when you're jumping into bed with somebody, even if it's like third date seems to be acceptable, that's a stranger. And then you're mad <laughs> about it. You're mad about it later when it doesn't work out. But guess what? You, you didn't even know this person. You created a story in your head about who they were. Totally. Oh, and this is mad like, that they weren't who you made up. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a pattern. it's a pattern for sure. So there is a way that some men manipulate women. I think women probably do this too, but I've just seen it from my own self for, It's men. So men in the early part of the relationship will start talking about commitment. Like this is, they'll show you, this is the church where my parents got married, or this is this thing I bought for when I have a baby. Right. And so you think that they mean with you. Oh, that's shady. It's shady shit, but they do this. And or they'll do the soulmate and twin flame thing. Yeah. Every, and I've gotten that a lot of people. You're my, I feel like you're my twin flame or you're my soulmate. And I'm like, you don't even know my yeah. last name or my favorite color or my okay. cat's name. Like you don't even know me. We're not yeah. soulmates. So <laughs> So they do this and, but then they won't commit. I've seen a lot of women. They're like, I don't know why I can't date. Like everyone's non-committal. And this is what's happening. The first, you know, couple of weeks is like the guy is dropping all of these commitment hints, but it's like, but then they won't commit and they're dating a like game. a bunch of other people. Right. It's a game. And so you, and so the same thing, what you're saying is like, it's, you're creating all this, but it's not real. Yeah. Not you, but like people. Yeah. And yep. so it's the same thing with this chaos. If you start sleeping with these really cutie little girls, Patrick, uh, <laughs> um, right away, like, yeah, they're hot and it's just, it's amazing and super fun, but it's like two months later, you're like, what did I do? Yeah. That wears off. The chemical haze wears off. Then you're with the real person and yet there, you, there's, it's so important. And I know you would say the same thing to your clients that, ask important questions, yes. ask about lifestyle. Yes. Values. Like, like lifestyle as in like, before I met my husband, I was like, I eat dinner at the table, a sit down dinner with knife and fork at the table every night as a family. So like, that's the kind of husband that I wanted to attract. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was not having a husband who wanted to go and take his plate and play video games. There's nothing wrong with those guys. I just didn't want that. It's not your preference. Yeah. Right. And so you've got to know your values and your lifestyle. So if you're like, Oh no, I want to go to the gym every night and I'm just going to eat protein bar. I don't want to sit down dinner. We would not be a good match because it's like, right. I'm going to be mad at you every it's night. It's important to you. Yeah, it's important yeah. to you. Yeah, so, so it's kind of like people set themselves up. They, you know, when they're in that chemical haze, they, they actually think, oh, well, I can deal with this. But then reality hits. It's like, no, this isn't what I wanted. You know, when you're just settling and you, the oh chemical haze wears off and then you're like really disappointed in, in, in oh. that, that relationship yeah. choice. So my last person okay. is Jackie Adams. Okay. Jackie Adams, I know very well. Is it the right time for her to pursue dating or love? Or does she have some more healing to do first? Jackie Adams. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to picture her. <laughs> Jackie Adams. Well, thank you for your question. Um, you're actually, it's really easy to tune into her. Um, there's some, there's something in between the question. So is it the right time or is there some more healing to do? You can do the healing faster. It feels like she's stretching out the healing. If I'm, I'm seeing this energy, it's a softer energy, um, like a hiding energy. And it feels like, I don't want to say anything. You, it feels like she's using the healing to avoid getting hurt again or to like, to like putting herself out there. So my answer is not because I, I feel like, oh yeah, she's in, she wants to like stretch it out. Um, 
so there's something in between like jumping back in and stretching it out and healing. There's something in between. It's like, you've got to clean. There's something that you need to go and clean up. There's this one very specific thing that you need to go and fix or like, it's like delete and the end it. There's something to go and then you'll be ready to date, but it's not this long healing process. It's like, just go fix the thing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't, it's, you're not sharing what it is, what the thing is, but it's okay. So like, I could tell you a little bit, like she's been single for many years now and yeah. she did her last relationship was bad. was pretty bad. Uh -huh. So I think, but I think she's, she, I know, I don't think, I know she's done tons of work on herself, yeah. mm -hmm. but what i noticed and what you said was like, it's, and you, I can't remember your words, but it was almost like you said something about her hiding. I feel like, yeah, she's, she's like almost complacent mm -hmm. with where things are like in like having a man in her life has been complicated. It's dysregulated her nervous system because yeah. it's not been the right person. I always tell her right. like the right person is not going to dysregulate your nervous no, system. Right? They're gonna be lovely. The right person's going to help you. You're it's going to be easy. It's going to be, oh, easy, yeah. you know, Delicious, so it, easy yeah. and amazing and incredible. Yeah. So I hope she has that because she's never had that for sure. So she has that in her future. Oh, absolutely. It feels like getting clear again, it comes back to this is getting clear on what you're really wanting, who you're really wanting to have in your life. This person. Uh, okay. So this person that you create in your mind that you want, like an actual human person, like obviously they're going to have faults and they're going to have their own background, right. And their own stuff that they've had, they've gone through, but this person still, when you meet them, you'd be like, I can't even believe that you're a real human. Like mm. I see this all the time. Like you create them and then you meet them and you're like, this is insane. Like, how is this even possible that this is a person, but it's because they're your person. They're the perfect match for you. And they have their quirks and they, and you have your quirks, but together you make it it's just like, it's magical. Right. And it might not be exactly mm. what you, there, there might be something like the looks are different or, you know, and I think it's, oh yeah, to, for sure. It's important 100%. to leave, be open to certain, don't be a too attached to a height or I think, I think oh, people, no, no, no. Yeah. I think people block their soulmates so many times because, oh, he, he wasn't six foot or, you know, or, or, or she, oh, yeah. she had short hair and I like long hair, like stupid superficial things. But, right. um, I, I know yeah. her type. There's a, there was a man that she, that she, she measures every other man against. Do oh. you know what I'm saying? And so she's got this very specific thing. And I wonder if that's a block because, um, you know, and he's married, he's not, he's not available, but she like, that's her ideal person. So I feel like she's got him on this pedestal still. Yeah. And, she, and then like, I think she wants a guy who's pretty much exactly like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. But so that could be good to focus on that. Maybe there is a guy who's very, very similar. I would look at what the qualities are or the traits are of that person. Why you think that that is the ideal person mm -hmm. for you and then list those out. What Make a list. Things? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It's really important. And one of the things I recommend is to get on an energetic, even energetic playing field. So that means that you and the, the guy are on the same energy wavelength, the same energetic, energetic um, playing Frequency. field. Yeah. Yeah. The reason this is really important is because sometimes we elevate the man like, oh, he makes lots of money. So he's better than me, or I'm better than him because, you know, like, I've been single for 10 years or something like that. Like we put each different people ourselves or the other person on a, on a pedestal or on a different energy level than ourselves. And we want to not do that. We want to be on the same, right? Yeah. So that's really important. And she, this is actually what something she said. And mm -hmm. she said that the best relationship would be when both people feel really lucky to have each other, you know? Yes, exactly. Nobody feels like I'm like, it was just exactly what you said. So like, I think she's aware of that. She's done a tons of work and I, I don't yeah. think she's going to attract. Um, but you know, the dating apps have been disappointing and she's kind of stayed away from them. So it's kind of like one of those things where a lot of us got used to, especially over COVID is 
like not going out, not being seen. It's like, it, it, like, like you told me, you know, your man is not the delivery driver. You know, you got to leave your house. And I'm like, oh yeah. Cause I feel like I'm with people all the time. Cause I'm always doing zoom all, all right. you know what I mean? But I'm like, well, this yeah. isn't actually being out in public. No, <laughs> the public can totally. see me. Yeah. But it's different. It's different. Yeah. Well, and I mean, you're amazing. And I can just imagine like all the guys are going to be like falling all over you when you go out in public more. <laughs> but one of the things is with the dating apps. So I met my husband online and Oh, cool. Yeah. So, um, the thing is with the dating apps is to be very crystal clear on who you are and what you're looking for, like to the like dot right? And do not tolerate anything less than that. Use your sixth sense, use your intuition to weed them out. And when people reject you because of something that you said, that's a, that's a blessing. You want to be rejected by these people who aren't into your authentic self, because that was going to be a disaster down the road anyway. Yes, exactly. Rejection is redirection. (laughs) I, I even put on my, so I'm, you know, spiritually awake. I went through an awakening And I put that on my profile, like, this is who I am. And so then they were not going to be like, thinking I'm just Mm -hmm. this cutie at the bar. It's like, no, I'm like a spiritual teacher. So right, right. (laughs) learn it, live it, love it, people. Right. So if that's who you are, you know, be that. Yeah. Yeah. That's great advice. Well, so Tracy, I respect your time so much. We've been talking quite a while. So I will say goodbye to you. But before I do tell people the best way, like, let's say somebody wants to, do you have any events going on? Or let's say um, somebody wants to get a hold of you. Like what's the best way for them to re- reach out to you and maybe make an appointment for a, a mediumship or a coaching session for love? How can hey, they, what, how, how do you want people to reach you? Yes. Perfect. Thanks. So I'm on Instagram and Facebook. So you can find me at love Tracy K. So at love Tracy K on either of those platforms and you can send me a private message or you can visit love Tracy K.com to book a session or to reach out. Thank you. Awesome. Did you have any events or anything? I think you said you wanted to offer. Yes, um, I have a the viewers. I do. I have a very special gift. Thank you. I didn't want to take too much time to go into it. So I have a very special gift. For you guys who are watching, I have a, a manifesting love meditation. You can grab that on my website at lovetracyk.com and it will guide you to releasing some of those blocks, the nice. past trauma or hurt that are keeping you from manifesting your true love. I love it. Is that one of the links you sent me already or oh, you uh, sent no, the website? You just go to lovetracyk.com. Yeah, you sent the website. Like They'll that. find it. Yeah. Oh. Thank you so much. It's been so wonderful. Thank Thank you for the free gift for the viewers. That's wonderful. Um, I loved talking to you. You're so fun. We knew it would be fun. We've been excited about this. It seems like forever forever ago that we scheduled this. And, um, and, and I was thinking when I was getting ready to talk to you, I was like, man, we should have scheduled it on that, like Valentine's day. Oh, but, yeah. but then I wouldn't have wanted to wait that long. So it's okay. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. It's okay. We waited long enough. Why punish ourselves further? We can do another one. Like, an well, dude, wonder. yeah, we could do like a little <laughs> alive or something on Valentine's day. We should do something like that. That'd be that fun. Be so fun. I'd love that. Yeah. So, I love being on your show and I love always connecting with you. We're friends now. So yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I love I'm so glad we met. I- yeah, you reached out to me. I was so happy. We vibe, we vibe. <laughs> I love it. And um, you guys, if you loved this show, please, please hit like so other people can see it. Share it with your friends who might be having like a love block, some sort of trauma they need to work on. Tracy mm-hmm. Kay is the person. I'm like I said, I've had a session with her personally. She is the real deal. Thank so you. don't forget to subscribe to this podcast. All things spiritual. If you're, if that's if that's up your alley, subscribe. <laughs> Don't just watch because I want you to get the notifications. I do a new show every Friday. I have a new guest, just like Tracy K, somebody who's spiritually gifted, spiritual teachers, and spiritual healers. So thank you so much, Tracy, for your time. You. It's my and pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. And Thanks, we'll say bye to the audience. Bye, everybody. Thanks, bye, everybody.